Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. It's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Tennessee Titans versus Baker Mayfield and the Indianapolis Colts. Just off the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. They come in off a loss last time out, but overall they've been playing well. Six wins and eight prior to that defeat. Meanwhile, for the visiting Col The shadow's starting to get a bit longer. Week 10 of the NFL season is here, and we're underway on EA Sports. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. They'll be led out by their quarterback, who's in his 17th season now in the NFL, an eight-time Pro Bowler to boot. It's Phillip Rivers. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. He's brought a check on the numbers for Kenyon Drake last week. 11 carries, 59 yards, and a touchdown. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. A run here for J.D. McKissick. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. He was brought down by Chris Harris. A gain of a yard on the play brings up third and four. Throwing Rivers. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It's a pickup of six. Tennessee Titan. First and ten at the 37-yard line. Now Rivers. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. Rivers pass. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. He's on the pickup. It's second and inches at the 47-yard line. Now Drake. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Two yards good enough for a first. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. Delayed game, offense. What's the deal, y'all? That's going to set him back five yards. Still first in. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. They'll run with Drake. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. He wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Running, it's Drake. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. No gain on the play. Brings up third down and seven. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. 
And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. you still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. The first down throw here for Rivers. And he finds Howard complete. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Titans take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. And there's a situation where it's a tight end. Once he gets that end zone in his sights, he's not going to back down from anyone. He doesn't worry about running to daylight. He doesn't mind running through contact. That's totally fine by him. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And this is good. Our score, 7-0 Tennessee. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the result in the end, the Titans touchdown. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. On the return, Williams. And a penalty marker's down on the field. And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. When the holding penalty sets them back inside the 20 as they get going on this drive. A first down throw from Mayfield. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and 10. Uh, looks for Lockett once more. This time he's got him. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. A gain of six yards. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. From the gun, Mayfield. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And this one will be brought back to the 22. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback, but as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. This offense thankful, I'm sure, to have the football back, but also, Charles, after a long drive of their own, they've got to be a little weary. Yeah, I would agree with that. And what you have to do to combat it, try and get fresh legs in where you can, especially to skill positions. And then for the offensive line, instead of attacking, maybe slow the tempo down a little bit, let them catch their breath. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep, first and goal. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. On first and goal, Drake. And the Titans are going to have a first and goal as some good running there gets them down to about the two-yard line. Knock it on the door. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. Decided to hand it off that time on the run-pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. He lost two there, and it's third down. 
That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. From the gun, Rivers. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Julio Jones, his second touchdown on the season. And the Titans find a way to stretch their lead. And there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Parkey for the extra point. It's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So that drive of four plays, and it ends with a Tennessee score. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Williams to return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. They'll run it for the first time with Williams. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a second and ten. the shotgun it's Mayfield and this one incomplete too much contact to hold on to that one and it's third down it's third down and ten on third down Mayfield and the throw there gonna be incomplete pass intended for Sterling Shepard Incomplete. Looks like a second empty possession to start the game. It's certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession, it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. Now the former Oklahoma Sooner, Tress Way, on to punt the football. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it'll be Titan football. So here are the Titans to take over on offense. They were losers a week ago to the Bears, but they lead things here as they begin this drive first and 10. Here's Rivers. There's a short one caught by Uzama. Rivers, a gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Brings up second and four at the 39-yard line. Working out of the gun, Rivers. The left side completion to Jones. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Catch number 40 for him on the year. It's a first down. First Good strong down. throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Play action now. Rivers. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 
And he'll be taken down, but first he gets deep into Indianapolis territory. 39 yards, the distance covered on the catch and run. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam, but notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a handoff for Drake. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We got double up, double up. <laughs> Running for the shotgun with Drake. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Jordan Evans. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Third and short yardage, Rivers. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Phillip Rivers with his third touchdown pass of the game. And the Titans are going to add on to their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Harkey adds the extra point, and it's now 21 to nothing. the score it's Parkey on to kick it away taken in the end zone and this will not be brought out it's a touchback at their own 25 yard here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over and some dangerous territory You're already down three scores a three and out here or an inability to put any points up this one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Second and six at the 29-yard line. From the 29, Mayfield. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man-to-man? -man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. And how about the start so far, Charles? Three first-half touchdown passes. And that's how you generate excitement on a team, keep your offense moving at a really high level, and it's also how you establish leadership by playing that well. Three touchdown passes, that's the way to lead. Now he's just hoping for number four. Brings up second and You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stumped the run. He's going to go up top for the end zone. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Darius Slayton with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. And man, Charles, talking about singing something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catches, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this. After that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. 
It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28 0 now. So that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. Now, after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep, and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. Bottom line, he's got to figure things out. He's completed three passes, but two of them have been to the wrong team so far. And when we talk about the best quarterbacks, we're usually talking about touchdown to interception ratio, aren't we? And two to one is acceptable, but the top line guys, three to one or better is what they're looking for. Now we're talking about interceptions versus completions. That's not a ratio should ever be in any discussion. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The throw over the middle taken in and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And it's second down. To throw, Mayfield. Caught left side, Williams. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. That last catch winds up costing him three, so now they'll need to convert on third and 13. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield, able to hit his target, Lamb. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Phillip Rivers, he is the focal point of our player's spotlight now. And it's been a good game for him to this point, Charles. They're winning on the scoreboard. they got to be feeling pretty good. And it's always fun for them when they're not just winning on the scoreboard, but they're contributing in a big way. You see him throwing touchdown passes, watching this video here. It's got to be a fun time for him and a relaxed time because nothing is pressing. Relaxed, cool, calm, collective, all those things describing him right now. They'll start the drive with Drake. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Brings up third down. Rivers. Eight yards to go. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. You got nothing. 57, Mike, 57. Mayfield to throw it, finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. After the incompletion here now, third and two. 
Third down. Now Mayfield. And, and he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Operating from the gun, Rivers. That's going to be caught by Judy. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Three yards the gain there. Second down. Final play of the half. Rivers. Now a hit. And Rivers lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. But they will not be able to capitalize as time has run out here on the first half of play. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll get back with you shortly. But first, let's take a look at what's coming up this weekend around the NFL. Some good-looking matchups on your screen there. One of the best? Yeah, I'll say it. It's in Cleveland. A big test there for the Browns as they'll square off against the visiting Houston Texans. Then more good stuff to follow later in the afternoon. One good one being under the dome in New Orleans, where it'll be the Saints taking on the San Francisco 49ers. And one final game to highlight. It's Monday Night Football, and they've got a good one this week between the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. In the game you're watching, it's the veteran Phillip Rivers, who's up to his old tricks. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already. And that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big. You're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. 10 yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at the 35-yard line. They go back to the ground, this time Jacobs. The football comes out. Jacobs lost it. It's picked up by the Titans. And they are going to bring this one back. A fumble return touchdown for the Titans. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. Now Parkey for the extra point. And he's been a busy man to extend the lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And this carries into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. Looking for a bounce back, had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. 
And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first quarter, finished with over 300 yards on the night, later ended up in the NFL. If you've got a talented back, give it back to him. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I think this running game, or should I say lack of one, is making this defense look better than what they really are. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Mayfield now making the catch is Sternberger. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And it's third down. Mayfield off the play fake. And he's got Lockett. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. How about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. First down, Mayfield. He'll find Lamb, that's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long. But a nice throw there for a good gain and a first down. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brings up second and seven. Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Third down. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. At their own 12-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And boy, showing how tough he can be to bring down, just fighting his way forward to pick up seven yards. Brings up second and three. Right back to Drake. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That's good for a Tennessee Titan. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Rivers now to throw on first down. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. First down, Drake. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Catch made by Slayton. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two at the Colts' 38-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. So the delay of game penalty backs him up. It's now second and seven. From the gun, Rivers. And this is incomplete. Rivers pass. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. A lot of times it's that first read that you had. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Uh, he came into this game within shouting distance of Dan Marino at 61,361 career yards. And with that last play, Charles, he just went past Dan Marino. I'm struggling over here. And the only reason is when you hear about him passing a Dan Marino. A legend. Makes you step back and really take stock of his career. And you realize it's not just about the numbers. It's about the accomplishments. It's about the play. How great has his career been to pass Dan Marino's? I'd say pretty darn great. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. And credit the tackle to Brandon Jones. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. They go play action. Rivers caught on the right side by Jones. And yeah, the Titans are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. Back now in Nashville. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. They come up again on second and goal. Working out of the gun, Rivers. That's complete to Slayton. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. A gain of one yard on the play. It's now third and goal. On the give, this is Drake. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 
Kenyon Drake. A good job there defensively to stop him for a gain of just four, and that'll bring up fourth and goal. Nice job there on the tackle, keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you, keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. The kick by Parkey is good. Now they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. Cody Parkey. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. Williams now on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Let's take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. A first down throw for Mayfield. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Over the middle, hauled in by Lamb. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. First and 10, Mayfield, left side to Lamb. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. Shoves him aside. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Complete. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Like second and four. At the and again, it's Mayfield. Out to the right here to Shepard. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. And eight at the 13-yard line. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Damian Williams. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Colts gain a bit of respectability. So they will get on the scoreboard here. Give them credit for that. Too little, too late, but no zero. Oh, you, you're going slow clap on me. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? No, but they haven't been very nice on offense. It's been a struggle. Dan, Dan Bailey now for the extra point. And they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. So this drive spans seven plays. And in the end, it was all capped off by the Damian Williams touchdown run.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And now let's talk about Kenyon Drake. And as we peer at the numbers, he got off to a struggling start, but since then really found his rhythm. And I think that comes together with not just the halftime adjustments, but just that quiet confidence. If you just keep doing the things you've been working on, eventually there will be creases. You know, find those gaps in the defense, keep working on them, and maybe what didn't happen very well for you in the beginning of the game, it starts to open up as the game moves on. Tackle made there by Tony Jefferson. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. They stay on the ground with Drake. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Right officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. It's now third and eight. On third down, Rivers got a man. It's Judy complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. They're looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, Drake. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. He was a loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football. So, to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they could pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. Here's Ty Long now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Colts will go on offense here first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can... And Mayfield again with the interception, his third. Picked up by James Bradbury. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. CD, this defense, man, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. 
And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got a plane to catch. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Kenyon Drake. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Seven-yard line. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And it was her defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So for Tennessee, the win will move them to seven and two now on the year. And now they'll get the weekend off as they get a little extra time to prepare to face the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they are barely afloat as they fall to four and five. And they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Green Bay Packers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.